Harley Quinn is a character who was originally created on Batman the Animated Series to basically just be the Joker's girlfriend, and this was actually her whole identity for quite a while. But in more recent years, she stopped being identified as just the Joker's arm candy and become a character in her own right. And in even more recent years, thanks to Margot Robbie, she's become one of the most famous and profitable DC characters, getting her own animated TV series on DC's streaming site and her own live action movie. Well, technically it's a Birds of Prey movie, but from how it's been titled and so far how it's been advertised, it looks like it's just going to be all about Harley Quinn. But because of these coming out, I thought I would do a video going over every time that Harley Quinn has gotten superpowers. Now, most people would say that Harley Quinn doesn't actually have any superpowers normally, but that's not strictly speaking true. Early on in her comics career, Poison Ivy gave her a potion that has made her immune to toxins and giving her advanced healing powers. Not quite on the level of Wolverine's healing factor, but she does heal quicker than most humans do. The potion also increased her agility, her skills, especially gymnastic skills, and her strength levels. Now, as Ivy puts it, she's not going to make Superman worried, but she does have an edge. So it's not quite super strength, but she is stronger than a normal person, and definitely stronger than a girl her size should be. So if you ever wonder how she's doing things like that, it might actually be because she has super strength, because it's never really been made clear whether she still has these powers in the New 52 comic and the Rebirth series. But it would explain her heightened skills and abilities, and how she manages to survive all these battles with superpowered individuals. But one thing we do know for sure in the New 52 and Rebirth series is that she is still immune to poisons and toxins. We know this because Poison Ivy made sure she was immune because they're in a relationship together, and she wanted Harley to be able to touch her indiscriminately without having to worry about negative effects. Though again, whether she has the strength hasn't exactly been made clear, but personally, I think it makes perfect sense for her strength and skills to at the very least be heightened, given how she carries on in her comics. Now, in the TV show Justice League Action, a demon is giving out objects that give villains magic powers, and Harley is seen at the beginning of the episode with a staff that is giving her magical abilities. And these abilities mean that she is able to fly, as well as command electricity, or lightning given the scale of it. Though exactly what other powers she may have is unclear, because she doesn't actually have the staff for very long and is very quickly defeated by Zatanna and Batman. And in the Countdown to Infinite Crisis series, issue 10, she goes to Apocalypse with some other girls to free the gods, and as a reward was granted powers by Thalia, the Greek muse of comedy. Now, she was given the power of cunning along with a large hammer, and what exactly the power of cunning is, is unclear. Maybe she just made her a bit smarter or made her a bit better able to fight, but it would make sense that she also becomes enhanced, meaning stronger, tougher and faster, especially given the giant hammer she's given. After all, without some super strength, it wouldn't be much use against all these superpowered individuals. But in any case, these powers are short-lived as they disappear when she returns to Earth. And in Harley Quinn issue 45, she also gets a giant hammer and also on Apocalypse, when she gets powers from Granny Goodness. For some reason, Granny thinks Harley is a good candidate for the Furies, who are an all-female elite team of metahumans who fight for Darkseid. So Granny brings Harley to Apocalypse and gives her a hammer that is either amazing technology or just plain magic. And it gives Harley super strength, the ability to fly, and makes her pretty tough and pretty much semi-invulnerable. So she does have these powers for a few issues, flying around on Apocalypse doing pretty much whatever she wants. And the hammer also has a granny box in it, which is basically just a mother box, but they've given it a cuter name. This means that she can boom tube to anywhere in the universe instantly, along with all the other abilities that a mother box has. And they have quite a lot, so I'm not actually going to list them here, but feel free to Google it. And in the TV show, Birds of Prey, the main bad guy in the series is Harley Quinn, though she's nothing like the Harley that we know. Instead of being an insane gymnast with a love of large hammers, she's instead a very intelligent psychiatrist who is treating Huntress, who is the show's main heroine. And Harley uses her psycho talk to manipulate Huntress and everyone else around her to get what she wants, which is basically revenge for the Joker's death. And then later it seems that she just wants to become a powerful super criminal and rule Gotham. Now, as I say, the show isn't actually that great and it only lasted for one season with 13 episodes. But in the season finale, she uses technology to transfer meta powers from a man to herself. And it gives her mind control powers that allow her to hypnotize people into doing whatever she wants them to. From barking like a dog. <coughs> to jumping out of a window and killing themselves. 
and she uses her powers to broadcast a hypnotic wave over all of the TVs of Gotham so she can make it so she commands everyone in Gotham City. Of course, she's stopped by the heroes, but as far as we know, she actually keeps her powers. The ending isn't really too clear on the issue. It just kind of ends without telling us what happened to her, so it's believable that she does still have these abilities if there had been a season two. And in the comic and the movie, Batman vs Teenage Ninja Mutant Turtles, Harley Quinn is injected with the ooze, which is the formula that originally gave the turtles their powers. It traditionally turns a person more into the animals that they've most been around. In the turtles case, they were mostly around humans in the form of their master, and so they became sort of human-turtle hybrids. Although in some cases, it's just turn you into the animal that you're most alike. Hence why it turns Harley into a hyena-human hybrid creature, as she has had pet hyenas for years, and of course, a laughing hyena is very like her personality. And of course, in this state, she has enhanced senses, agility, and strength. Though the heroes, of course, whip up a cure for the ooze, and they return her and the other transformed villains back to normal. And incidentally, although the title and the premise of this film may seem a little bit silly, I do actually recommend watching it because it's actually a really good film, which rather surprised me because, like I say, it does seem a little silly when you actually look at it. And there was also one time in Harley Quinn issue 59 that three witches cursed her and gave her a bug face, as a curse for her vanity. She then later completely turns into a bug until she's able to break the curse by not caring what people think about her. Now, I'm not sure if this really counts as a superpower. Yes, she does transform and she's probably stronger with the insect's proportional strength and she can stick to walls and fly, but she doesn't really do any of that stuff. This issue doesn't really see her being a hero. It just sees her dealing with her own vanity and issues. But still, I thought it was worth a mention. And on another occasion, in Harley Quinn issue 35, she was transformed into a version of the Man Bat. And this happens when Dr. Langstrom's wife has become the new Man Bat, or Woman Bat, not quite sure how you really want to put that. And she captures Harley Quinn and injects her with the transformation formula. And Harley turns into a Human Bat hybrid and doesn't actually have her normal faculties. She sort of becomes an animal, turning quite rabid and loses control, attacking people at Coney Island and stealing hot dogs. But her friends track down Langstrom's old lab and they find the antidote and inject Harley with it, turning her back to normal. And in Harley Quinn issue 50, Harley breaks all of the comic continuity of the DC universe and a lot of chaos ensues and we see several alternative Harley Quinns from different timelines and universes. And all of these Harleys pretty much have all the classic horror movie powers. We've got a vampire, a witch, a werewolf, a blue lagoon-like creature and even a cyborg Harley. Now, this is only for a page or two of the comic, so it does count because it does happen, but these aren't exactly that important. And when she fixes continuity, they of course go back to their own universes. And in the Injustice video game, she takes one of the super pills and gets the power of super strength and increased durability, like pretty much all the heroes who don't have superpowers do in the Injustice universe. And actually, at one point in the Injustice comic book series, she uses this strength to rip off Lobo's head which is really an insane feat of strength because he's not only got his healing factor, he's also pretty invincible to begin with. And it really marks this as probably the strongest that Harley Quinn has ever been. Or at least it was until Harley underwent six trials from the Lords of Chaos and Order. And when she passed them, she became their champion. This is in Harley Quinn issue 66, where she became the Angel of Retribution, giving her immortality, a giant flaming sword and cosmic powers including, but not limited to, flight, including flight through space, super strength, and of course, toughness, and pretty much invulnerable. After all, she is immortal. And her first act with these powers is to try and kill the Lords of Chaos and Order who gave her the powers. This is because the final trial she had to overcome was actually the grief of her mother dying, meaning the Lords of Order and Chaos killed her mother just to see how she would react. So she wanted revenge. And she did become the Angel of Retribution after all, so it kind of makes sense. But the problem is, the Lords are deities, so of course, she can't actually kill them. They're immortal. And they also reveal that they didn't actually kill her mother. Her mother was actually always going to die of cancer. They just used it as a test to see how Harley would react and whether she could overcome the grief. So Harley then tries to give up her powers in exchange for them bring her mother back to life, which for the Lords of Chaos and Order is literally nothing. That's the same as me or you nipping to the shops. They can do it easily. But Harley's mother doesn't actually want to come back as she said it was just her time to go. Which personally I think is kind of dumb because if anyone could actually be resurrected, they obviously would want to. Of course, resurrection is impossible, so it's kind of a moot point, but you know what I'm saying. 
But even so, Harley decides that she doesn't actually want these cosmic powers because having them just complicates everything. So she gives them to a friend of hers instead and just becomes regular Harley Quinn again. And that's all the times that Harley Quinn has gotten superpowers. But lastly, I thought I'd quickly go over all the times that she has wielded power rings. Now I normally mention power rings as separate to superpowers since they're technically just superpowered gadgets, not powers. But seeing as how it's actually only a few times she's done it, I thought I'd combine the videos this once. And in the series, Harley's Little Black Book, Harley basically just hangs out with different superheroes in each issue. And one week, she hanged out with Green Lantern. And in the story, an alien crashes on Earth with a few different power rings. And the guys who find them decide to sell them online on Webay, which is of course DC's eBay. And after missing out on buying the green power ring, Harley's upset and buys a black and red power ring instead which is a special one-off ring seemingly made just for this comic, which is of course a merging of a red ring and a black ring. Now, when Harley puts this on, it does give her the same powers as a normal lantern, but it also seems to affect her mind and sends her nuts. Well, more nuts than she usually is, and she sort of turns into some sort of semi-evil person who goes around on a mad crime spree that is basically teaching jerks lessons. And because of this, Green Lantern turns up and the two of them get in a fight. Now, like most superhero fights, it ends in a draw, or pretty much a draw. That is, until more aliens turn up, looking to get the power rings that were lost on Earth. They attack Harley Quinn and are able to take her ring from her. And then she and Green Lantern team up to take the aliens down. And at one point, the Hal Jordan Green Lantern gets knocked out, and so Harley Quinn takes his ring and becomes a Green Lantern in order to save them. So she actually wields two power rings in the same issue. And in the Sinestro comic, issue 18, she is temporarily granted a yellow lantern ring to fight in Sinestro's war. Though once the fight is over, the ring abandons her. It was actually only a quick drafting into the war, and several people get them, including Superman and Wonder Woman, but they quickly lose them once the fight is over. And that is every time that Harley Quinn has gotten superpowers and wielded power rings. Now, I have to say, more so than any other person I've done a superpowered video on, Harley Quinn has been the most difficult to find them all in my research. So there is a chance that this list has missed one or two times when she's gotten superpowers. And of course, in a new animated show, which is coming out soon, they may actually have her getting superpowers once or twice. So if you've seen that in the future, or if you know of any other times that you think should have been mentioned, then please let us know in the comments if she does get powers. Along with what superpower is your favourite, and of course what superpower you'd most like to see Harley Quinn get in the future. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.